I sure overdid it this past weekend. Oh my gosh. Started a huge farm project and then in the middle of that I ended up playing a show Saturday night at the Lyric Live Theater and it was completely worn out when I got on stage. <laughs> If you want to hear more about all the details of the big project and some other things that were going on over the weekend, stay tuned to right after this. Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Monday, September 26th, and as I mentioned, I had a heck of a weekend. Let me just give you an encapsulated uh, version of it. Let's see, first thing I did Saturday morning was uh, fix electrical issues in the big uh, animal barn, I guess you'd call it the original barn on the farm, uh, which incidentally the story is that that old barn used to be a church up in Mexico, Missouri. It was a log cabin type church, uh, you know, a log built church, and they disassembled all the logs, brought them down here and turned it into a barn. Now that's the story I heard, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But anyway, I got that uh, electrical issue figured out and uh, helped my wife get the lights back on and all that. Then, uh, shortly after that, I completely rewired our 12-foot uh, tilt trailer. The uh, electric on it had quit working, uh, at least reliably. It wasn't working very well, so completely rewired that. Then, the wife had the notion to uh, take the uh, big truck that I just fixed with that uh, turbo actuator. You know, I had to put that in there. She wanted to take the truck out for a test drive, and she wanted to do that pulling her big horse trailer. Well, that's a three horse horse trailer, number one, and it has a full camping quarters in it. And it has tack room and all that. So, I mean, it's a big, big, heavy trailer. Uh, I forget how long it is, but I think the trailer itself is, I don't know, close to 30 feet long. It's, it's a long, big, long trailer. So we hooked, started hooking that up, and then I had to fix the connection on that. It, it wasn't really anything serious. It was the lock that goes down to lock the ball in. I mean, like it wasn't like the ball was a problem. It was the lock itself. So I fixed the lock and got that working. That was another project I had to do Saturday morning. And we got that working and we took it out for a test drive and uh, it pulled these big hills around here. It pulled them at uh, 70 and we even hit 80 at one point and no problem at all. It didn't even act like there was a load behind it. So I think we fixed the turbo actuator. Now keep in mind, I just, I'm sorry, this is a slight digression, but I feel like I have to say this. We fixed that for $900 and about, I'm going to say four hours of my time. Now the cheapest estimate we got was $3,000 and the most expensive was $5,000, uh, over $5,000. Now you got to understand that from the dealer, they say the part cost 2,500. Okay. So you figure he just doubled the price of the part and that's what he was charging us. But $2,500 for four hours worth of work, and he, if he's a professional mechanic, he probably could have done it in three hours or less. So $2,500 just for the labor, if that's for three hours labor? Well, I fixed the whole thing for 900 bucks and four hours of my labor. So all I know is somebody's getting ripped off somewhere if you're paying these prices. I'm not saying all mechanics are like that. I'm just saying that, boy, there are times when you get ripped off big time on some of these things. And that would be one of them. I mean, I thought this was going to be some major hard production, you know, have to pull the engine out and fix it, you know, that's what I'm thinking by the prices. I mean, it was pretty darn simple. Almost anybody that could um, change a tire on a car, you could probably do what I did. I mean, it really wasn't that tough. Ridiculous for the prices, just really ridiculous. Anyway, okay, I'm off that. Uh, so then we, we did that test drive. That was totally successful. I'm really, really happy with it. In fact, I don't think it truck ever had that much power. <laughs> it was just, it was unbelievable how it pulled that hill. 80 miles an hour uphill pulling that big trailer. No problem at all even. Could hardly even tell it was back there. The next thing after that, well, then I ate a quick lunch. By then it was lunchtime. <laughs> then I jumped on the Bobcat and went back and started straightening out the creek 
And here's a short video clip to show you this huge project. This is probably going to turn into at least one video, if not several videos, to show you the full project. It's quite an undertaking. My friends, for your bearings, that shed that you can see there is probably 400 yards, well, 300 yards, this side of my workshop. My workshop's on the other side of those far cedars there, at least 300 more yards. But I'm back here just to give you some bearings. The new pond I built, you really can't see it, but it's basically right there. It's in front of those great big oak trees right there, those giant oak trees. Um, yeah, right there. Those uh, oak trees are where the spring comes out and fills that pond. So I'm just giving you your bearings. I've got a huge project going on here. Let me just show you what we're doing. This creek runs all the time. It's spring fed by several springs. And you can see here a bank, I think. These weeds are a bank and you can see it drops off and it drops off about eight feet and uh, to the creek there. And my wife was driving a tractor coming this direction, pulling a trailer and a couple of eagles flew out and she was watching those eagles and got distracted and let the tractor run off this edge right here. And I'm not lying to you, the tractor was hanging in midair. The only thing that saved her life was the trailer and the trailer stuck in the ground back here. You know, the, um, the jack on the trailer, that, that thing, that, you know, the straight up and down piece on the jack, it stuck in the ground and anchored the, the tractor from turning over on top of her right here. It would have killed her for sure. There is no doubt in my mind. And she goes, well, I was gonna jump. And I said, honey, you don't realize you were already dead. If that trailer hadn't been on there, you didn't have time to jump. You were dead. And that trailer has saved your life. So anyway, the point is because of that, uh, this, you know, this shouldn't be this way anyway. What's happened is the creek used to go over there, way over there. And uh, it washed all this dirt out and it's washed out into my field. So what I'm doing, and I've already done it, is cut a trench over there all the way up through. And now the water is running down that trench. It's already started. I still have a lot of work to do to fill in all of this. But now I can do that uh, because I've got the water redirected. It still shows like it's running here, but really I think that's just drainage because um, it is already running over there straight down, the, straight down the path. So it's a huge project, but I've only been working on it about an hour right now. And I cut all the way through that stuff and that was a hard cut. Let me tell you, you just really don't know. Uh, I wish I could have filmed that. You wouldn't have believed it. I cut out a bunch of trees and uh, a whole bunch of dirt. I, I cut probably two feet of dirt out of there to get it level with the stream up here. Let me see if I can show you a little bit of that. I'll try to get through here. So this is, I made myself a bridge right here to get, to get down to it. And uh, you can see the cut I made and you can see how deep it is. And I cut that all the way down there so it's it's probably close to 50 yards of dirt that I cut and you can see now the stream is running and it will now be perfectly straight straight down through there instead of cutting through over here where it's where it used to run and that was cutting out that bank and that's where the tractor almost ran off was just on the other side of that little tree there it's to conserve ground but it's also to conserve life is the reason i'm doing this because anybody could drive through there and get distracted and run straight into that ditch now that won't happen and it's only because the ditch curves out into the field i just want to make it clear that you know the trail is coming straight and then the trail then the the ditch comes out across the trail and the trail has to go around the ditch but it won't have to go around it anymore we can keep the trail straight anyway that's the name of the tune i just thought i'd let you see what i was doing and by tomorrow this will actually be running clear right now of course it's running muddy and that's because i had to do all that work in there but by tomorrow it'll be running clear well, I hope you enjoyed that little preview of the project that's coming up and you'll get to see a video on that sometime down the road. 
that all depends on how busy we are and whether we can get it put together, uh, which you know I'm always pretty busy. So I got on that Bobcat at about one o'clock and I stayed on it till four o'clock. Now, you might say, well, that's not that tiring. And it wouldn't be if you're operating one of those that's completely controlled by your hands. But I was operating the old school one that's, I mean, it's a big bobcat, but it's old school that you operate with your hands and your feet. And that just kills your legs because your bucket is completely controlled by your legs. So, you know, I overdid it for sure. And then we got on stage by seven. So there was barely time to clean up and, uh, you know, uh, eat a little dinner and then get there and set up the sound and get on stage. <laughs> there was just barely enough time to get all that done. The bottom line is uh, we had a good show Saturday night. I think it went really, really well. Um, I couldn't play worth a hoot. I was wore out. I, I seriously was. I, I could just barely get through anything on my part of it, but everybody else did really good. And, and I think overall the crowd seemed to really enjoy it. So then yesterday morning, I pretty much crashed till about lunchtime. I didn't hardly do anything. And then I uh, got out there on the Bobcat again about one o'clock and operated it till 4.30 again on this big project on the farm. On the other side of the coin, the uh, I showed this in the shop talk on Friday and the, the it has not changed. It's just like it was on Friday shop talk, but you can see that it's on its way back to living. I've just got to put the back on it now, and uh, it's almost ready to string back up once I put the back on it. When I put the back on it, I'm going to try to do my little, what I call my cheater's neck set. I'm going to try to pull this neck down and, and uh, get the neck angle right, because right now it's a pretty flat neck angle for an arch top guitar. And that's going to be today's project, is trying to get the back on this thing and get the neck at the proper angle when I do that. We'll just have to wait and see if that works out. It may not be possible because, you know, these braces go through the, uh, the curve here, and that kind of keeps you from doing too much torquing. You can't do too much torquing when that is the case. But we'll see and see if we can't torque it enough to get the neck angle right as we put it back together. But I'm not going to spend uh, Gary's money on doing that because uh, he doesn't care if it's playable. He just wants to hang it on the wall. It's a family heirloom type thing. So we'll just have to see where that lands later. Here's a random picture uh, that I took. Uh, the story behind this is uh, my granddaughter called my wife and says, you got to take these plants. My mom's killing them. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, our daughter, Lisa, apparently uh, apparently doesn't have the same green thumb that uh, my wife has. And uh, so we took uh, this plant in and here's how it looks now. Yes, that's an orchid and it bloomed as you could see. It really turned out pretty and uh, it smells really good too. I think that's going to be about it for today. Thank you for tuning in. I've got to get busy and try to get caught up on some stuff. We'll see you tomorrow.